In this video, I want to talk about how someone who has created 100 and plus tutorials for Rebel uses Rebel. So there's a handful of personal tips and tricks that I will be sharing with you that are not all part of the program, but really help me create. Um, having a good understanding of what the program is capable of and how uh, and what I do for my processes. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is a painting I did earlier this year, and uh, I think some of my art I really like and some of it I don't like. Uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this one and we'll go through a couple other um, pieces as we go so I can demonstrate a few features. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you are just watching this video, subscribe to this channel right now. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is making these free on the YouTube channel for a week and then um, putting them into the members or into, into a Rebel course that you can find on my website. I'll put the link in the description. Now, the shortcuts I'm going to be showing you, you can execute a number of different ways. You can use a keyboard, you can use well, Wacom's uh, radio menu or their express keys. I'm using the uh, Tablet Pro Studio um, buttons here on the left side. That's over here on the left side. The shortcuts are going to be displayed right up here at the top. You can see space. This is done by KeyPress OSD. You can find the link to that software in the description as well. And I'll be using the radio menu from Tablet Pro. Uh, there's a handful of different features that we built into the software to make Rebel specifically easier. And so I'm going to show you those right now. So this is a brand new feature. We're going to color pick and color pick again and again and again. Now I pressed one button on my stylus and I picked colors four times. I didn't have to look where I was pressing to select the color picker. After selecting it the first time, it went to the center of the, of the radio menu. Notice here, you can do that same thing with zoom. We can do the same thing with panning the canvas. This is really useful. I like to keep my general navigation, color picking, brush resizing, uh, and zoom right here in the center. You can see the tooltips resize. This is color picking, zooming, panning. This should be pretty simple. Once I press one of these once, that button goes into the center. That setting is right here. Briefly replace center button with last inner circle action. And I opened here radio menu options in order to get there. Now, the next trick that I'm doing for uh, something a little bit different than moving and, and adjusting brush size. So I have on the outside of the radio menu, inside of Rebel, one, two, three, four, and five. What these do is these uh, change the different painting modes. So that's paint is one, paint and mix is two, paint and blend is three, blend is four, and erase is five. Let's move this up higher. So I use these very frequently, six, seven, and eight. What these actually do is this brings me to my favorites. And this will, sh this will go to the very top uh, group in the brush favorites. And it'll be the first, second, third, and fourth ones. This will be six, seven, eight, and nine, the keyboard shortcuts. Notice that I'm switching here. Now, if I minimize this, and actually bring this to my portrait brushes. Um, these are available on the website as well. Uh, then it'll do these ones. Let's see, seven, eight. If I had a nine on here, it would bring this there as well. All right, so let's hide that UI. And let's look at this real quickly. Okay, now this is a little bit out of proportion. All right, so here I'm going to select six, seven, eight. Uh, let's select a darker color. You see, this is a shadow brush. 
so this is uh, the settings on this one. I have a shadow glaze brush. I keep opacity fairly low, and this is what I use if I'm making shadows uh, like around an eye or something like that. So you can see up here, there's uh, what looks like the same type of action. So we would bring the size down, we paint over the top. And when I'm doing this, usually I use a very desaturated color. This one is this deep um, rust color. The, the tool that I'm using, the settings I'm using, uh, this is called Previous to Radio Actions, and I have this set to Radio Menu. This should be Last. Uh, radio Menu Last will open whatever the last one was. If you switch these, um, it will um, reset what I'm about to show you, the previous two radio actions. Okay, so let's look at Paint and uh, Erase. I said that in the opposite order. So we're going to Paint. I'm going to press the side button and erase and paint and erase. So what this front button on my stylus is doing is it's doing the last two actions I selected from the outside ring. It doesn't do the inside ring um, because I want that to go to the center. That way I can uh, very quickly access um, a handful of repeating actions without having to look around the radio menu. All right, so I can use this to paint and blend. Let's go paint and blend. And I'm blending and painting and blending. And this is, again, it's a very, very quick way to work inside the program. And uh, something we made specifically so that the application uh, the Tablet Pro Studio app works better with Rebel. All right, now let's look a little bit more directly in Rebel. Uh, the tools that I use, I used to use the lasso tool quite a bit, uh, right here, the selection tool. And what I would do is I would select the eye and then I would switch to I would click on the warp button. And we would actually switch transform here. I would move it around or I would warp it a little bit in order to get it to be in whatever shape it was that I was trying to get. Uh, and then what I would have to do is deselect. And then I would need to go in here and blend. And this was just a pain in the butt. Uh, so now, thankfully, in Rebel 7, they added the liquify tool. So they added the liquify tool. That is right here. This is smudge and liquify. Make sure you're not using smudge. That will um, blur at the same time. Oops, we're not blurring. Smudge, this will blur at the same time that it's adjusting things, and then you have to go over and do it again. Uh, that's something I wanted to avoid. I spent a lot of time in the details. So we're going to switch to liquify push. Let's increase the brush size. Now you can see that we can adjust this any way we want, and it keeps this fidelity, which is super useful. Really, really wonderful. I like this a ton. Granted, I still struggle with proportions uh, quite a bit. That's a, a big challenge for me, so I'm working on improving that. Uh, flipping the canvas back and forth does help with that. And so that's um, Shift F. And then I've been learning, looking at something smaller helps. You know, what's wrong with it? I'm looking, oh, this eye is too high on the right side. Oh, the eye is too high on the left side. Oh, it's too high on the right side. You get the idea. Too high and too far away. Okay, so let's bring this higher. And... See, did we fix it or did we make it worse? And let's see. Uh, it looks a little better. All 
All right. So that's the liquify tool. You have a couple other options here. You can do expand. So if we wanted to make this bigger, make her look really strange, we can do that. And there's a few other things here. I don't usually use these too much unless I'm doing like a tattoo or a shape on the skin, uh, which I will show you here. These are my portrait brushes. Okay, so let's do one of the intricate textures and let's say we want to paint on her skin, Dystopia, as a face tattoo, because everyone loves face tattoos. All right, she's been in prison for a long time and she just got out and she can't wait to see her three little kids who were born while she was in prison. Let's go back over here and we can use this to expand in the places where it would naturally expand. I would put this on a different layer and then contract around the outside so that it appropriately looks like uh, her tattoo is on a round surface. Ta-da! Right, the next tip is just holding down one of the painting buttons. Let's switch back up to portraits and that will allow you to uh, quickly go in between you know, like blending and painting and blending and painting or uh, that same thing but with uh, erasing or some of the other different modes. Now those I call uh, fast toggles or their hold to use uh, type of functionality. Okay, let's look at oil paints. So we're gonna go over here to oils and acrylics. This is what we're gonna finish up with today. I will continue with more uh, shortcuts and tips in the next video. For this section in oils, we're gonna make this a little easier to see. So I'm gonna go to visual settings in the bottom right corner of the layers panel. And we're gonna open visual settings. You can do this also here in window uh, visual settings is F12. We're going to go most of the way down. You can see impasto depth for here. I've turned this up to 10. This is just to make things a little easier to see. All right, so let's take a rake. I'm going to put some colors on the screen that are high contrast. We're going to go here to a gouache liner. Now, if I'm painting here, uh, I, I might want more interaction between these. I might want this to um, kind of push this paint around. You can see it's destroying the impasto underneath. So what we, we might want to be doing here is we might be painting over the top. Loading, turning this down, you can see the effects of the paint on the ridges here. This is a huge difference as opposed to here where we're we're adding and destroying the impasto. So keep in mind that a lot of these brushes, you can get that effect by turning loading down. Now we're painting on the high spots and not destroying. If you want to really actually destroy the impasto, you can switch this to blend right here, number four, and turn the loading up. And you're going to see that you can get a change in the impasto uh, a lot more easily. This is how you work pretty effectively with impasto. I have some really beautiful thick impasto brushes also on the website and can go into more detail in that if there's an interest. Another tip, I use the undo action on the radial menu because it allows you just to drag back and forth to delete or to undo rapidly, and then you just click the side button again to stop undoing. I, I think it's very quick. It's a nice way to do things. The next video, we're going to be talking about color selection using the mix color option, different color wheels, pigments, using real pigments that you can buy in the store for your paintings, reference images, and a couple other topics. All right, thank you so much for watching. 
I appreciate you being here. Again, if you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe. You'll get this video and the upcoming ones for free. If you are late to the party, then check out the website, tabletpro.com slash rebel. I'll have more information there as well as the same videos in the members area of my YouTube account here. All right, until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.